Having a greenhouse like this is cool, but you know what's not? Watering. And the problem becomes even bigger as your garden grows bigger. If you watch my videos, you might remember that I built a watering system for this garden last year. Right now, I want to see how this system looks like after being left outside for about six months and upscale it for this greenhouse. In fact, I already did that. This system is right here and it is working really, really well. But in this video, I will also build a smaller version of this system for a plant indoors. And I will show you how to build it with Arduino MKR. I hope you will enjoy this video. But before we start a quick break, and this is not an ad, I just wanted to tell you that I have a new space dedicated just for making. After about 10 years of working from my own bedroom, I have this space with plenty of desks for the electronics, for general DIYing with two 3D printers and another desk just for the computer. This space is still half empty, so I'm open to any ideas you might have to the layout and things that I can add to make it even better, so you can leave that all in the comments. Unfortunately, the view from the window is not real. This is the power of generative fill by AI and an easy fix to fix a low dynamic range of your camera. And now back to the project. The idea for a smaller system for indoor plants was born because of my inability to water them regularly and because of this cheap pump that I bought online for just about $1. The pump turned out to be quite capable and powerful considering low price. Taking inspiration from my first design of a watering system I did few years ago, I sketched this concept and 30 minutes later turned it into a CAD design. To print all the pieces I used this new and cool printer I'm recently testing. The spike was a simple print, but on the lid I wanted to have a water droplet on the top. And normally if you use a standard 3D printer, like for example Ender 3, you need to change the filament at the end of the printing process to have different materials, different colors mixed into one print. But on this printer, thanks to two nozzles, I can actually do that automatically without any input from me to the printer. You can expect a full review of this printer soon on my channel. Because this system is used indoors, I wanted it to look cool. And one part of looking cool is, of course, a nice case design that I think I was able to create. And the other are obviously LEDs. And this ring of LEDs is addressable, which means you can access every single LED on this ring and assign different color to it, but you can also do like pretty nice light effects. And it was just perfect for this project. Another part of the system was a soil moisture sensor. Last year, when designing my own system and my own soil moisture sensor, I learned that resistive sensors are pretty bad. Designing it on my own was a great learning experience, but in the end, the sensor wasn't working that great. So this year, I used a capacitive soil moisture sensor, the one that is very popular and you can buy it online, but also I designed my very own sensor with 555 timer, and we'll get to that in a second. Tests proved that commercial sensor works fine and indeed watering influenced the results. For my own sensor, I designed a custom PCB with 555 timer and a few basic electronic components. The design is very similar in fact to the commercial sensor, but I'm using a higher quality PCB that is a bit thicker and theoretically should last longer. I had some problems with choosing the proper values for all the components, but once I started testing, it worked. The range is a bit low and there are things to improve still, but it worked and I can detect the soil moisture level easily. Now going back to the indoor watering system, I tested the pump with the MOSFET and when that was working fine, it was time to assemble, connect all the little pieces together, close it in the case and test it. To control this system, I used Arduino MKR 1010 with built-in Wi-Fi and there is a reason for that. The reason is Arduino Cloud. To explain you why this is important, we have to look at my old project that I built almost 10 years ago. It was a smart home with Arduino and Android app. I had to build a custom Android app to display some very simple information in a nice way on a phone from Arduino and this project wasn't really working that great. It was crashing a lot, it wasn't really reliable. Now with Arduino Cloud, you can easily program your board, you can store the data and you can display it in a nice way on desktop and mobile devices. Unfortunately, free account lets you store the data only for one day, so that's why we don't see the full plot. 
but it is still working fine and you can control all the variables, display, the status of your board and basically use it for any project you want. So here is a complete mini watering system for your plants indoors that you can easily connect to the internet and if you want you can also expand it for more flowers with some more tubing. And then we should see it actually watering. Oh, it's already working. And now let's take a look at the bigger system I built last year. Here, in this box, there's everything just I left it about six months ago when I have been disassembling this system. Last year, I placed everything into a box and left it in a garage for the winter. I was surprised to see that the voltage on the battery is still quite high. But how does the DIY PCB look like after such a long time? Still fine, no problems at all. After a year and a winter in a cold garage, the system was intact. I connected all the cables and the battery was in a perfect shape. The solar panel was charging the battery through the charger and then the system itself was working fine with the sensor it detected that there is no water because it wasn't yet installed in the barrel. It was signalizing that and it wasn't watering for that reason. With nothing to fix, I just installed the system next to the greenhouse. I digged a pretty big hole for the barrel to hide it completely then installed the pump and the sensor in the barrel and lastly the tubing in the greenhouse. Here is the splitter I designed and printed with PETG last year. It works fine, there is no problem with that. You attach the bigger holes from the pump to the splitter and then distribute water to each plant with the smaller black holes. It was working great, but this year I improved it just a little bit and I think it makes a big difference. I filled the top part of each connector and now I can just cut off as many as I need with knife or scissors and that way I don't have to worry about that while designing it in cut. I can actually just go there and grab a few of the splitters, cut as many as I need, connect all the hoses and finish the greenhouse. Yes. I know that collecting rainwater is a good idea and that what for is the yellow pipe here but it requires more digging that I am not yet ready for. As I filled the barrel and the sensor detected that there is water inside, it already started watering and we can see that almost all the sprinklers work fine, you can adjust the intensity by rotating the sprinkler like this. And just like that the system was up and running for the season. It's pretty cool to see that the system is still working and it definitely makes more sense to automate watering the greenhouse because there is quite a lot of plants to water rather than automating watering a single flower in your room. Of course unless you have plenty of flowers because as I said you can expand the small indoor system for multiple flowers if you need to. But there is one more thing I really don't like to do and want to automate. And I hope I will be able to do that in one of my next videos.